If you go to pretty much any political candidate's website, you're gonna find the section that has the endorsements. The individuals and the groups who have said, this guy or girl is good, you should vote for them. But Bernie Sanders is going in a different direction. He quoted FDR by saying, I ask you to judge me by the enemies I have made. And so uh, to that end, he has made a section of anti endorsements where he's listed individuals who have spoken out against him, sometimes uniquely against him. They'll accept any other Democratic candidate except Bernie Sanders. He's listed what they've said and also why you might not necessarily want to agree with these individuals. So we're gonna go through a few of them, although you should definitely go to the website and see more. First, you have Haim Saban. So this is a billionaire. You're gonna notice that a lot of them are billionaires. But he spent millions of dollars contributing to candidates and effectively you know, buying their support. He's also in the past called for the bombing of Iran in 2014, attacked President Obama's attempts to bring peace to the Middle East, and attacked senators for urging humanitarian aid to the Gaza Strip. And he said on the candidates, we love all 23 candidates. No, minus one, I profoundly dislike Bernie Sanders. He thinks that every billionaire is a crook. He calls us the billionaire class and he attacks us indiscriminately. Well, can you imagine being a billionaire and someone refers to you as the billionaire class? That would just, that would put a real itch in your britches. Uh, but anyway, so he likes everybody except Bernie Sanders. Now, for the most part, the billionaires that we're gonna highlight are attacking Bernie Sanders because of his economic philosophy. And for some of them, they would probably oppose other candidates who, who uh, agree with Bernie on some of the policies too. In this particular case, it mainly seems to be a foreign policy thing. And in particular, the US policy towards Israel. He disagrees with Bernie Sanders on that. So Haim Saban, anti-endorsement highlighted on Bernie Sanders page. Now we get into other billionaires generally who are opposed to him on things like taxes, minimum wage, and things like that. You have Kenneth Langone, co-founder of Home Depot. One of the, the things, the through lines in these endorsements I've noticed is that everyone involved in creating Home Depot is apparently a hardcore right winger. That's apparently what I'm seeing. But Kenneth Langone, he's a net worth of $3.7 billion. Despite that, Home Depot's wages are so low that many of their workers, like at places like Walmart and stuff like that, are on food stamps, Medicaid, public housing, effectively being subsidized by US taxpayers, which means that Kenneth Langone's wages effectively are being subsidized by US taxpayers. Now he has previously said in 2016, I saw Bernie Sanders and the kids around him, I thought this is the antichrist. Why? Because he looks at that $9 minimum wage and says, I want it to be higher. I want it to be 10, I want it to be 12, I want it to be maybe 15. I want these people to be able to afford to live in America. And for that, antichrist. But not just Bernie Sanders, the people who support him as well. So Kenneth Langone, uh, hardcore anti-endorsement there. You have billionaires like Andy Puzder saying all these proposals, Sanders proposals, they're just going to kill the growth. I mean, this is a guy who has gotten rich, fat, and happy off of the policies of people like you know Trump and George Bush, but also Obama and, and you know, Bill Clinton too. And the fact that minimum wage has been kept so low, you know, things like protections, like the, the access of unions to collective bargaining, overtime rules, all of those things have been effectively kept in a way that denies the, the, the full access and participation in the economy of the American workers. That's a thing that's worked for him. And so I sort of get it. I get why he wouldn't like Bernie Sanders. But I also get why a lot of people might be interested in the fact that this guy doesn't like Bernie Sanders and might want to learn a little bit more about Sanders' agenda. Uh, Lloyd Blankfein, former CEO of Goldman Sachs, turns out not a big Sanders supporter, saying uh, on Bernie's candidacy, it has the potential to be a dangerous moment. Now look at that. Lloyd Blankfein says that Bernie Sanders' run is a dangerous moment. This is a guy who benefited massively from the Great Recession. Huge bailout from the Federal Reserve and the Treasury Department. Um, you know, Obviously, his former corporation has been stabilized because of that. Him and other executives have made off like bandits as a result of that. No accountability whatsoever for the crisis. They've become even wealthier, wealthier as a result of it. And he says that Bernie Sanders, the one who wants to give money back to the people, that's the dangerous moment for America. You got people like Alan Greenspan, probably not surprising that the former Federal Reserve Chairman, not a big fan of Bernie Sanders. He says, remember the basic problem of inequality is the fact that people are born that way. He said that on Fox Business. I don't know what the point he's making that is. Yes, people are born into economic inequality. And thus it is on us, our political and economic system to help to fix that. We can simply stand by and watch it as some people do quite well because of the way the system is made and others languish in poverty and suffering for the entirety of their lives. I guess we could do that and I guess that's what he's supporting. I don't think that's necessarily the best path forward for American workers or for our country at large. So Alan Greenspan, I, I would be happy to have him oppose the damage report as well as Bernie Sanders. 
But those, I mean, some of these are not surprising, really. Uh, but then you have groups like Third Way. So this is a centrist uh, think tank. It's been around for a while. It wants to make sure that we put up the weakest candidates possible. Now, from their point of view, it's because those have the best chance of winning. They're dead wrong on that. They're 100% wrong, and they will never learn because they have backed any number of horrific candidates, not just for president, but of representatives, and especially in the Senate, that have just gone down in flames, running weak candidacies that will never inspire anyone by attempting to say, hey, that Republican, he's kind of mean, right? Well, I'll do most of what he'll do, but I won't be mean while doing it. But for me, that's what they're pushing for effectively. And so no, they don't want Bernie Sanders, of course not. They say Bernie Sanders is an existential threat to the future of the Democratic Party. And what I love about that is I agree to the current state of the Democratic Party, but a better Democratic Party that will not only be more electorally successful, but also deliver for the people that the Democratic Party has said for 50 years, 100 years, even longer that they are there for, it'll be a far better party. And so yes, it's an existential threat. Yes, in the, in the words of Lloyd Blankfein, it's a dangerous moment, but not for America and not for the American people. It's dangerous for those who have been benefiting from the way things are. Now, some of those are benefiting economically like this long list of billionaires, but some like Third Way and the, the, the contractors and the consultants on all these campaigns, they've loved the way things have gone. In a perfect world, sure, they'd like political power as well, but they're certainly getting rich running these horrific campaigns that are based entirely on TV ads and bringing in consultants. And you see, I don't want to go off on too long of a tangent, but McGrath, who just launched her candidacy, raised a ton of money and then decided to weirdly backtrack on Kavanaugh and say that Mitch McConnell, the issue with Mitch McConnell is he hasn't been effective enough in pushing Trump's agenda of draining the swamp. That's the sort of candidacy you get when you let the consultants pave the way rather than people who understand the actual desires of the American people. So I wanna end with one more quote from this webpage with Bernie Sanders saying, in the words of President Franklin Delano Roosevelt, they are unanimous in their hate for me and I welcome their hatred. We will overcome their greed and create an economy and a government that works for all, not just the 1%. And I love this strategy because those people, many of whom are, they go on Fox News all the time, they're well connected with these political organizations. Behind the scenes, they are attempting to tip the scales. And so why not use their opposition against them? If, you're, if you are a voter and you're looking out there, there's so many candidates. Don't you want the one that all these billionaires are so opposed to, those who have done so well the way things are? Those who are backing candidates who are gonna keep things the way they've been for the past few decades? I think it is a fascinating campaign strategy and I hope it works out for him. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.